It all started at my friend's party. Mary, I just hope I survived the test long enough to be able to explain to you in person. That's me. My name really isn't that important. I'm Sally Goodman. Lately, freaky things have been happening to us. Well, this is my first experiment by myself. Have you guys played the Midnight Game? It's this game that started out as an old pagan ritual. I'm not sure what I'm writing this down on paper and not on my computer. Let me start out by saying that I am not a paranormal investigator. I am an author. Subject number zero zero. Did someone ever feel like me? I don't think so. I'm not sure what I'm writing this down on paper and not on my computer. I guess I just noticed some odd things. It's not that I don't trust my computer. I just need to organize my thoughts. Everything just blurs together these days. I just moved into this place a few weeks ago. I got a great deal on the basement floor. Only downside is that it isn't incredibly isolated. I'm starting to see why it was so cheap. There is only the necessities here. No windows. I even had to go out to get my own mattress. I'm starting to feel cramped in this small apartment. Maybe that's a problem. The lack of windows make day and night sleep by seamlessly. I haven't ever been out in a few days since I've been working on this programming project so intensively. Hours of sitting in front of a computer can make everyone feel strange, but I don't think that's it. I'm not sure when I started feeling like this. I can't even tell you what it is. Maybe I just haven't talked to anyone for a while. That's what I noticed first. Everyone I normally talk to online haven't been like on for a while. The last email I got from anybody was a friend saying he'd talk to me when he gets back from the store. It was yesterday. I'd call them, but reception's terribly down here. That's it. I just need to call someone. I received quite the shock. It was dark and gloomy out. Definitely not lunchtime. How long have I been down there? I ran through the list in my head of people who would be up this late. It was when I got a signal. I remember my best friend Amy was at a party tonight and would probably be up. I froze before I pressed call. There was some negative feeling in the back of my mind that kept me from pressing it. It's such a strange feeling. 
to be afraid of nothing. the wrong number. Bye. That was odd. Jane? Oh, thank God it's you. Well, who else would it be? I didn't recognize the number. Oh, that? I'm at a party on 7th Street. My phone died just as you called me. This is someone else's phone, obviously. Oh, all right. So where are you? In my place on Applewood. I feel just a little bit cooked up. I didn't know it was so late already. You should come here and party with us. Oh, I don't feel like going out by myself to find this place. Probably just gonna stay here and work or sleep. Nonsense, I can come and get you. Applewood isn't too far from 7th Street, right? <laughs> How drunk are you? You know where I live. Oh, right. I guess I can't get there by walking, huh? You could, if you wanted to waste half an hour. Right. Okay, I have to go. Good luck with your work. Thanks. I don't know if that was the two strange calls, the eerie street outside or what, but I couldn't shake the feeling something was off. I had the sudden feeling that something was watching me, following me, that when I turn the next corner there will be something standing there, some sort of horrible entity that stood on the edge of loneliness. An irrational fear, I know. But the feeling stayed. Writing helps a lot. It helps me realize something is wrong. It's getting late. I got a call from a wrong number, and Emmy's phone died, so she called me back from another number. Nothing strange is happening. expected to see last night. I ran up the stairwell and looked out the window only to see nothing. Everything from the last night seems hazy to me now. I cannot wait to go out into the sunlight. 
I didn't want to go to my room yet, so I decided to go explore the building, more specifically the top floor. seen this place before, this lifeless, nearly abandoned section of the apartments. My nerves will finally be at rest. Maybe I should get some air. The feeling returned. I felt that if I opened the window, something with truly horrifying would come in. No, no, no. no. Thunder. <laughs> I didn't really think anything would come of this, but I'm bored, it's raining, and I'm going stir-crazy. Nothing happened though, so I came up with another plan. I cannot see the front. I should put the camera in a better spot. Oh, this is useless.
look terrible. Just a bit stressed. This programming job is getting to me. Anything new in your life? <laughs> Not really. Nope, there's this new kid in class, though. He's really cute. Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, I need to take this. Give me one minute. Oh, all right. I gotta go, my mom needs me for something, but how about you give me your email so we can talk later? Alright, talk to you later. See you later. <laughs> place we usually go to. Well, I do love pizza. There you go. Henry? Seen with your own eyes, don't trust them, they? What? To mean. I haven't talked to Henry in a while, so it was a bit of shock to get an email from him, especially right before I was about to open the door. The door? I almost opened the door! Why now? Is it a desperate email? What happened to him? What he's trying to tell me? Seen with your own eyes. Maybe... The webcam conversation felt so strange. She was vague. It was eerie. Was it? God, I don't remember. I got a phone call from an unknown number and a known voice on the other end spoke to me. A strange, unknown man made me feel uneasy. My friend then left the conversation and asked for my email first. I messaged her first when I saw her online. Then the phone called. I told her I was half hour walk from Sevens. No, no, no way! What are they trying to find me? Where is everybody? I don't know what to think anymore. Maybe... Maybe if I call someone, things will get better. No. Not call. Things didn't go well last time. Maybe if I text someone... There we go. Lately, I send the message to all my contacts. At this point, I just want any reply back. 
I didn't care what it was or if I embarrassed myself. Anything will settle my mind. I started frantically sending messages to people, telling them where I was and to stop by in person for some reason. I don't care at this point, I just need to see someone. Something came up? I'm having a hard time believing that. What's going on, Jane? People have been talking about your absence lately. Have they? Oh my gosh. To be honest, it's been a crazy few days. Look, I'm gonna come over. Sounds like you need company, okay? Yeah, that sounds great. Do you know where I live? Yeah, of course I do. I always have. Why do you ask? No reason. I'll see you soon. See ya. <laughs> I started to tear my apartment apart looking for something. I don't know what I was looking for actually, maybe just something to get my mind off things. I'm so glad I found the old radio. It must have been left behind by the previous owner or by my landlord. It was nice to have the radio. It gave me my only contact to the outside world as I waited for Amy to come over. sister for me. <laughs> she doesn't know it. But I count the day that I met her as one of the few moments of the true happiness in my life. I remember the summer day sitting in the playground with her. Much too old to play. sitting and hanging around, doing nothing, nothing at all. position this better. Hey, do me a favor. Um, there is a camera near the 
door. Can you stand in front of it? I know it's crazy, but can you do this for me? Uh, sure. Hey. I know it's weird. I've had a weird few days. Must have. Open the door, Jane. All right. Give me a sack. How could I be sure that it was Emmy, though? Hey. Give me a second, please. Tell me one thing about us. Just to prove to me that you are you. Oh, we met randomly on a playground when we were both way too old to be there. Okay, perfect. I explain everything soon. Just stay right there. <laughs> All right. Friday. I haven't been out for days. I destroyed everything electronic. My computer, the radio, everything. And now there is no way they can get to me. Everything I ever posted. My name, email, location, only got out because of me. They know everything about me. And it was my fault. Whatever is out there trying to get in only knows about me because I told it so. I'm acting crazy. This is all my nervous paranoia. But why hasn't it come in? If it got so far, why it hasn't it gotten me? But there is nothing out there though. <laughs> nothing ever got in until I open the window or even open the door but I haven't opened my door since wherever wherever is out there never appeared in this building before I opened the door I let it in terror takes me over every time I try to put the past few days together the email the email with my own eyes. Don't trust them. Why did I get this now? What he's trying to tell me? Why is it cut off? Why can I get through the door? Why does it want me specifically? Am I? Am I the last person there? Jane, it's Amy. Open the door. No! It's not really you! Go away! Jane, I brought help. You don't have to do this. Alright. Give me a moment. I need to think. Okay, don't be long. Things are only getting worse. My mind is jumping from one possibility to another. I hear voices outside. They sound real. They sound like Amy. But there could be speakers outside faking it all. Miss Van, please open the door. We're only here to help you. 
And this is only natural, Miss Daniels. It's something we've been studying. It's a case of cyberkosis. It's caused by something that got through somehow. Miss Van here is just part of a wave of emergent behavior. A lot of people have the same problem with the same fears. It's just good we got here. It's still in its early stages. Have you seen anyone face to face lately? Oh no. I made it worse. I spread this disease. Somebody's probably having a meltdown now because of me. We really don't want to lose another one. People like her are intelligent. They have a way of making connections and things. It's their downfall in the end. They can't not make connections even when they aren't there. <laughs> I have to give it to you. It's perfect explanation. Neatly explains everything. <laughs> Perfectly, in fact. Perfectly explains everything that I ever heard or seen since I've been here. <laughs> so will you please open the door, Jane? No. No! I cannot be sure. How can I know that it's you? Nothing is real anymore. Miss Van, just stay put. We're going to help you. Jane! Jane! Signals, waves, lies, everything. There is nothing left in here to trick me. Why can I still see and hear all this? with your own eyes. That's what Henry was trying to tell me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what is the difference between the camera and my eyes? <laughs> they turn light into the signal. And it just stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I don't know what day it is. Time seems to stop in this room. I'm slowly starting to forget the outside world as I spend in my final days here. The entity outside brings me food and water, masking itself as a kind nurse. I think it knows my hearing has sharpened. It fakes conversations and lives outside the building. Worst of all, the thing comes to me masquerading as Amy. Here she is. You have five minutes, as usual. Thank you. I hate to see you like this, Jane. You should have opened the door when you had the chance. I have to give it to it. It's a perfect replica. Looks, sounds, and acts just like her. I love you, Jane. You were like family. I need you to know that we're not here to hurt you. We're real. There's nothing here deceiving you, Jane. It's time to go. I'm ready. The fake Emmy used to come every day, then every week, and eventually stopped coming altogether. But I don't think the entity will give up. I don't know what happened to the rest of the world, but I know the thing needs me to fall for its trick. Maybe the real Emmy is still alive out there. Kept alive only by my will to resist this being. I hold on to the hope. I will never give in. I will never break. I am a hero. <laughs>